are congruent, so this must be the midpoint on the other leg. So I'm going from midpoint to midpoint. So this dude is a mid-segment. And the mid-segment is half of the length of the mid-segment is half of the sum of the two bases. So here's your equation. Do you all right? You see all that? <clears throat> so one half and then say 12 plus 28. 12 plus 28 gives me, what is that? 60, yep. 60. No, 40, yep. Uh, 12 plus 28 is 40, and then divide that by two, or multiply it times one half, remember it's the same thing, and I get 20. So this length here is uh, 20. And notice also that how far is it from 12 up to 20? It is six, and so therefore I have to go six beyond 20. No, it's not six. <laughs> this higher math is killing me, I need my calculator. To go from 12, why do I keep on saying 6? I like 6 and 60, huh? Uh, to go from 12 up to 20 is 8, and then you add another 8 beyond 20, and that gives you uh, 28. Okay, see how that works? That can be helpful for you. All right, so you're ready now to do this, these two, three problems uh, down here. And uh, let's cut you loose on your own. I don't want to take too much time on this, uh, this video. But for number five, make sure that you draw. You must draw your trapezoid and uh, draw it according to what they say. And don't they say here? Yeah, you were at right angles. So make sure that you um, draw it correctly where you have right angles for J and M. And remember that the sequence has to be correct. So start at J, like for example, this was J, then the next one would be K and L and M. And so get that sequence going around, but then make sure that however you draw it, that J and M are right angles. Okay, and then fill in the length of the sides and then uh, figure out what the uh, mid segment is. Okay, so the drawing is really the most important thing. Once you get the drawing right, Everything else flows. Okay, we're ready for kites. Let's go fly a kite. So what is unique about a kite? Well, it has two pairs of, they say consecutive. I'm going to use the word adjacent. You could use consecutive, that's fine. But I'm going to use the word adjacent, like directly beside uh, each other. So two pairs of adjacent sides that are, cor uh, are, that are congruent. So it's not opposite sides. If I had opposite sides that were congruent, well, that would be a parallelogram. Remember where this guy goes? <laughs> here it is. So here is a two pairs of opposite sides. That's a parallelogram. But when I have two pairs of adjacent sides, or you could say consecutive sides, uh, that is a kite. That's all that I need to know about this guy to know for sure that this is a kite. So once I know that that's a kite, what does that tell me? It tells me that the diagonals will be perpendicular. So here's the long diagonal and the short diagonal. And those two intersect each other at a right angle at 90 degrees. And those are perpendicular. It will always be that kite, that way for your kite. It will also always be that if you have a kite, then the it'll have one pair of opposite angles that are congruent with each other and it will always be the pair of largest angles notice that the pair that's across from i don't know how you'd say that um, the shorter diagonal uh, or the shorter diagonal spreads between uh, those two opposite angles those are going to be your larger angles and then you're going to have a smallest angle and one on the, the side where you have your tail. You know, you're going to attach your tail here. Let's do a nice little pretty bow here under your tail. That's going to be the smallest angle. And then this angle here would be your, your medium angle. Okay, so once you know it's a kite, then you know for sure that the uh, diagonals are perpendicular. And you also know for sure that uh, one pair of opposite angles are congruent with each other. And I'm pretty sure that the converse is also true. They did not say that here in the, in the no, 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 it would not be true. But not for these angles, but it would be true 
for the uh, the uh, bisector. No, the uh, diagonals. If the diagonals are uh, perpendicular, then that is proof that it is a, a kite, but not the case for this because you can think of another way to, if you have these two angles, to move this around and create something that's not a kite. So the converse of this one is not true. Okay, so a kite has some cool qualities to it. Let's look at example number four here in your book. Nice colorful kite. Let's assume, doesn't look like it is to me, let's assume that this, this uh, side here is straight, going right across there. So here are your pair of adjacent sides that are congruent. There's another pair of adjacent sides that are congruent. That's all that you need to know, to know that this is a kite. So it all, even has a tail, pretty cool. And what do they tell us? They tell us... That, oh yeah, just by looking at the diagram, that uh, this angle, not this colored angle, but the top apex, the vertex uh, angle here is 115 degrees, and this, the smallest angle is 73 degrees, and they want us to find this other angle uh, here on the side. And remember that since it is a kite, therefore these opposite angles are going to be congruent to each other. So if I find one angle, then I find the other angle. Hey, this is a quadrilateral, and remember this equation, n minus two times 180, that's the sum of the interior angles. So the sum of this quadrilateral is gonna be according to this uh, uh, expression here. And n, the number of sides, which is also the number of interior angles, is four, plug in four there. And I'm reminded, that the sum of the interior angles of any quadrilateral is 360 degrees. And remember, these two angles are congruent with each other, so let's call that, let me call it x if you want to, and so call this one x also. So therefore, I can set up an equation. I can say 115 plus x plus 73 plus x equals, how many degrees? 360. That's what they've done here. The measure of angle D plus the measure of angle F plus 115 plus 73 equals 360. And as we just said, these two opposite angles, the largest angles, are congruent with each other. So you can substitute uh, angle, the measure of angle D for the measure of angle F. And that's like saying two times the measure of angle D these two, kind of go combine those two together, and then subtract 188 from both sides, and now we found the measure of one of these angles. So this guy over here is 86 degrees, so this one also is 86 degrees. So if you take 73 plus 86 plus 115 plus 86, you better get 360. So that's the kind of skill that they're asking you to use when you do this problem uh, here number six and so you need to draw a diagram of a kite and then uh, fill in these angle measurements accordingly remember though this the angles across from each other uh, will be the longest the no, largest they'll be the largest angles and then the longest side here will create the smallest angle so make sure that you put these in accordingly into your diagram and go ahead and write this down uh, remember it's the sum of the interior angle so go ahead and calculate that for a quadrilateral and that's what you will uh, set the sum of these four equal to the sum of the interior angles and then solve that equation for x right and then what is the measure of the angles that are congruent yeah then you want to because uh, one of these is going to be congruent. Obviously, none of these three are congruent. So this 3x is either 75, or it's 90, or it is 120. And in fact, you can tell. Because remember, the largest... Oh, can you tell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell. Because the largest angles are going to be the ones that are congruent with each other. The smallest is by itself, and this is the medium size. So already, you can tell which one of these three are going to be the same uh, measure and congruent with this 3x. It's going to be the, the biggest one here. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to point to which one it is, but it's that one that is <laughs> congruent with the 3x. Okay, hope that's helpful to you.
May the Lord bless you, and I do look forward to seeing you in class.